This is the first in our series of lectures on section 3.2, which deals with equivalence relations. In this lecture, we'll give the definition of an equivalence relation and give a few examples. An equivalence relation is a relation that has three special properties. Um, if we let R be a relation on a set A, then it's referred to as an equivalence relation if it has these three properties. R is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. And the formal working definitions of those terms are given here. We say that R is reflexive if it has this property here. For every element x of a, x comma x is in the relation. In other words, x is R related to itself. R is symmetric means for every pair of elements in A, if X is R related to Y, then Y is R related to X. And finally, we say that R is transitive if for any three elements X, Y, and Z in A, if X is R related to Y and Y is R related to Z, then X is necessarily R related to Z. So let's look at a particular example of a relation and see which ones of these three properties it has. Uh, it's a relation on the set given by this, and here's the relation. So is this a reflexive relation? Is it necessarily true that for any x in A, xx is in the relation? So A consists of 1, 2, 3, 1, 1 is in there. 2, 2 is in there, and 3, 3 is in there, and therefore it is a reflexive relation. Now what about symmetric? Symmetric means whenever x, y is in the relation, then y, x is necessarily in the um, relation. So look at 1, 2. Um, is 2, 1 also in there? Yes. And look at 2, 3. 3, 2 is also in there, and I think that covers off all possibilities, therefore it is symmetric. Now what about transitive? Is it true for any pair of elements x, y, and z? If x, y is in the relation and y, z is in the relation, you notice that this y is a, a linking element, does it necessarily follow that x, z is in the relation? And I think the answer is no, because if you look at 1, 2, and 2, 3, 1 is related to 2, 2 is related to 3, but I don't think 1 is related to 3 because we don't have 1, 3 here. So therefore it's not transitive. Um, we've produced the counterexample of um, 1, 2, and 2, 3 being in the relation, but 1, 3 not being in the relation. So since it doesn't satisfy all three properties, this is not an example of an equivalence relation. Let's look now at a more serious example. Uh, we're going to call the relation S, and it's a relation on the set of integers. Um, x, y lies in the relation um, if the difference x minus y is even. And the claim is that this is an equivalence relation on z, and I want you to prove it. In order to prove it, you have to do three things. You have to prove that it's reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So put your video on a hold or on pause and see if you can at least prove that this relation is uh, reflexive. Write a formal proof that it's reflexive. Here's the proof that it's reflexive. We say let x be an element of the underlying set, in this case z. And now I have to deduce that x comma x lies in the relation. So that means I have to verify that x minus x is even. Okay, so here's the proof of that. Since x minus x is 0 and 0 is even, it follows that x comma x is in the relation, and thus s is reflexive. Now put your video on pause and see if you can prove that it is symmetric. That means whenever x, y is in the relation, you have to deduce that y, x is also in the relation. See if you can write a formal proof of that. So 
So here's my proof that S is symmetric. Let X and Y be in the underlying set Z. So here I'm supposing that X, Y lies in the relation. So that means suppose that X minus Y is even. And now I have to deduce that Y minus X is even. So to say that X minus Y is even is to say that there exists an integer K such that X minus Y is 2K. And therefore Y minus X is 2 times minus K. And since minus K is an integer, it follows that um, Y minus X is even. And so yx is an element of the relation. So I started off by giving myself an arbitrary xy in the relation, and I deduced that yx was in the relation. So I have the right to say that s is symmetric. So finally, see if you can prove that s is transitive. That means give yourself an xy and a yz in the relation, and you have to deduce that xz is in the relation. Put your video on pause and see if you can do that. So here's my proof that s is transitive. Let x, y, and z be integers. Suppose that x, y is in s and y, z is in s. If you look down to the end of the proof, I deduce that x, z is in s. So that's exactly what I need to do in order to show that s is transitive. So let's see how I do that. Uh, first of all, I explain what it means to say that x, y is in s and y, z is in s. It means x minus y and y minus z are both even. Now, if you look at these two things together, how can you combine those in some way to make a statement about x minus z? Well, if you just look at it, you'll see if you add them together, you're going to get x minus z. And so I guess it comes down to knowing that the sum of two even integers is also even. So that's what I say next. As we've proven on other occasions, the sum of two even integers is even. And so x minus z, which is the sum of these two even integers, is even, proving that xz is an element of s. Thus, s is transitive. So finally, since s is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, s is an equivalence relation.